Shalom. Call hello, Yahweh Bashim El Shai, Bahashem, Bakaha Kwadash. Double honors unto the apostles, double honors unto the elder bishops. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth, that be like unto the speckled bird among the heathen nations, that look like those heathen nations they're scattered among. And to the Akwath that are listening and learning to you, I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago. Coming at you with another lesson in truth, brutal reality. And um, yeah, you know, there's a saying, I forget who said it. Um, it may it, this that saying may have come from Orson Welles. Um, or I could be wrong. Someone could actually put it on the comment board, but the it basically says that speaking the truth um in in you know in dire times is you know it can be a revolutionary act all right especially if you're speaking the truth against powerful governments and the name of this video will probably be the world bank slash w e f overlords because you have these people who have placed themselves above all the laws of every country in every land you know um the world bank and its connection to the WEF, you know, these unelected officials who control presidents, prime ministers, governments, et cetera, et cetera. They have these meetings and, and no one's voted for them, but yet they dictate and direct policy in countries, in powerful countries with gigantic militaries, with presidents, prime ministers, you know, but yet they're not the ones in control. And these people lead from behind the curtain. They give you a mouthpiece, you know, and but they they direct from behind the scenes. And that's the problem with uh, social media and the Internet now is you can shed a light on these things. And, you know, and then their way of dealing with it is just saying, well, this is this and misinformation. And like I said in a, a video short that I did on uh, TikTok, you know, just a couple of days ago. Um, you know, uh, uh, the state of, uh, of America, like I was, I was speaking about, I was speaking about, uh, what do you call it? Uh, graffiti. And I noticed that, and then there's something that I noticed about graffiti that I never really paid attention to before. Gra graffiti is a form of protest. And just because something is in a form of graffiti, it doesn't mean that it's a lie. Like it says, Karen, who just exposes the global puppet masters? And that's exactly what she did. And that's her obituary. All right. She ended up dead. You know, dead women don't talk, don't tell secrets. What does this one say here? Karen Hootis, uh scam buster. All right. It says a famous whistleblower blows the whistle on popular scams. So the same way we're blowing the whistle on the falseness of, of, of race and who the Israelites really are. All the history that was hidden. You know. But uh, let me grab a scripture, and then I'm going to play a quick video. You know, the scripture's got to come out. And this is uh, the book of Isaiah, the 29th chapter, and I'm going to read the verses 15 and 16. All right? And uh, it reads... Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from Yahweh, and their works are in the dark. They say, Who seeth us? Who knoweth us? Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say to him that made it, He made me not? Or shall the thing framed say to him that framed it, He hath no understanding? See, they're doing all these things so that they can get domination and control of the world. But the, the Lord already has his government set up. And a lot of them are already speaking and telling you the truth about who the, who the, uh, the Israelites really are. Uh, who, who, you know, is ex exposing the fact that the majority of the, the race of people that call themselves white are actually Edomites, not Japhites. All right. Japhic was a melanated people. All right. Identifying who the Hamites are, the Moabites are, who Elam is who Ishmael is, you know, identifying 
the biblical nationality and races of the people so that you have a better understanding of the Bible, so that you have a better understanding of the prophecies. You know, and, I'll, and as I learned from, you know, from the apostles and the, and the, and the elder bishops, you know, uh, a decade and a half ago, that you would never um, have a, a understanding of this Bible until you until you can uh, uh, embrace the racial aspect of it, until you know who the nations actually are. Then the Bible actually begins to make sense. It, it reads different once you can, uh, you can place people today to who they were in the ancient world and then apply it to, to your reading of the Bible. It reads completely different after that. You see it differently then you realize that this whole universal thing is a lie because these people that are in control, the only thing they want is universal control of all people, which they've tried to do before and the Lord intervened. You think he's going to allow them to do it the second time, especially after they've touched the, uh, you know, the apple of his eye. You know, they just uh, go around the world of spoiling nations and, and, and taking their resources. This is Isaiah 33 and one. And it reads, woe to thee that spoil us and thou was not spoiled. And dealest treacherously, and they dealt not treacherously with thee. When thou shalt cease to spoil, thou shalt be spoiled. And when thou shalt make an end to deal treacherously, they shall deal treacherously with thee. So Esau Edom is running out of power. All right. Many of their people are trying to make deals, trying to get around, you know, all this support of uh, BLM. And BLM is nothing but a white organization with a black name on it, you know. Same thing as Antifa. This is the sort of thing that they do. They they put a couple of uh, 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 dark faces on it and gave and gave you know as the heads of it and gave it that name. But this is but that is a device that was completely used as controlled opposition by Esau Edom, the so-called white man. These are the type of things that they do. And this woman was constantly exposed and stuff like that. And um, and it's believed that she got silenced. She didn't just die of natural causes. She didn't have a sudden adult death syndrome. You know, she didn't have, she didn't have a, uh, you know, she didn't die of blood clots from, uh, you know, from that stuff. But here we go. Let me, uh, let me find this quick video of her. And um, why is it playing all that? These singing ass, rapping ass Israelites. <laughs> Lord didn't uh, send for rappers, man. I mean, I appreciate the music, but damn, that's not what your job is. That's not how you're supposed to wake up Israel. You're supposed to go out on the highways and byways. You got a problem with that? You know, it's not with me. You got a problem with the Lord. But here we go. Um, yeah, I wanted to cue it up first. So let's get that ready. And here we go. I told you that the most powerful banking entity in the world is laundering money. And that its corporate bureaucrats go to great lengths to make sure that their illegal activities are never discovered. Well, right now you're probably thinking that's not news. So stay with me here. The World Bank is an international financial institution that's designated to help developing countries by providing loans on the name of quote, reducing global poverty. However, the banking there giant is. has been accused of actually increasing poverty by keeping the third world in perpetual debt and in servitude to the first world. But aside from its obvious critiques, there's also blatant criminal corruption taking place at the highest levels of the financial institution. One woman has risked everything to shed light on this truth. She's exposed information that reveals the extent of the collusion between financial groups and foreign governments. Her name is Karen Hudes. She was senior counsel at the World Bank for 12 years before blowing the whistle. She's joining me now to talk about her experience and what it all means for the rest of us. I'm joined by Karen Hudez. Thank you so much for coming on, Karen. Thanks for having me. So could you briefly explain what the impetus was for you to speak out? What did you see? I was a lawyer and I saw securities fraud. I saw financial information that was not being disclosed to $180 billion worth of bondholders. It was my job to make sure that the financial statements were correct. So first, I reported it up the corporate ladder to the audit committee. When that didn't work, I went to the U.S. Treasury Department. And when that didn't work, I went to the U.S. Congress. Senator Luger wrote three letters to the World Bank saying, don't fire this lady. And they promptly fired me. 
this means that the U.S. Congress does not have the information that it needs. So they stuck with the problem. After I was fired, three senators asked for a GAO inquiry into the corruption that I was reporting at the World Bank. Senators Luger, Leahy, and Bai. Walk us through what exactly, you know, where was this money being laundered to whom? The money was going every which way because anybody that reported misconduct was fired. So mm. in one case, the borrowers were being over overcharged. In another case, I was reporting corruption in the Philippines. $900 million worth of money that should have gone to fight poverty in the Philippines instead went to a corrupt man, Lucio Tan, who was in default. You know what, I'll just loans. put it down. You can see his herd is talking. A run on the bank, Philippine National, uh, the, the investment uh, company tried to bail out the bank for $500 million, and then the board was lied to. And my story is about trying to uncover the cover up. The cover up went all the way to Congress, and then it went to 188 ministers of finance. So this is corruption in the entire world. And until it's set straight, what we're going to have is we're going to have a currency war. So you think that this was just a microcosm of what's happening across the entire institution? You just saw one aspect of this kind of laundering? It wasn't just me. There's a group of World Bank whistleblowers. There's one of us from the United Kingdom. There's one of us from Mexico. There's one of us from India. There's one of us from Ethiopia. And we're all reporting the same thing. Corruption from top to bottom of that institution. The money's going every which way, but where it needs to go to fight poverty. And Sounds so like Title 4D. Child support system. And then you had a couple senators on your side, Congress people. Um, what if the corporate press, you said that you continuously tried to go to them with the story to cover it, and you were shunned as well? Absolutely. And the reason why I found out, it's because the corporate press is owned by one mega conglomerate. All of the financial institutions in the world, j just about, are part of this scheme to rip off everybody, every single citizen on this planet. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. And it's not just um, my idea. There was a very accurate report on this from the Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich, Switzerland. Three mathematicians looked at accurate corporate data on 43,000 transnational companies, and they reported that through very clever interlocking corporate directors, these groups managed to grab 10 times the power than they otherwise had in their finances. Damn. So they own 40% of the assets of all of the companies traded on the capital markets of the world, and they own 60% of the uh, earnings for every year. This means Damn. that the central banks for the world are issuing paper money with absolutely no accountability to the people who are using this money. And pretty soon, in a matter of weeks probably, the whole system is going to come to a screeching halt with something called gold backwardation. Well, let's back up a little bit because, I mean, basically there's no oversight over these institutions. Uh, aside from laundering money uh, plainly, they're also laundering money offshore, hidden in these bank accounts, offshore bank accounts. I want Tyler to talk Ford about does the same how much thing. power the banking system really has over geopolitics. I mean, you just broke down that all of these people are kind of interlocking. Would you say that they control the government as well? Absolutely. What I have documented is state capture. I tried... She just said that there these these banks, how is it that they're over geopolitics? You see what I'm saying? The men of the Great Millstone and many of the other Israelites have been telling you this all along to have information go to the voters before the presidential elections because Robert Zellick was Mitt Romney's national security transition planning chief. CBS wouldn't report it. If the voters don't wow. know who they're voting for, I asked CBS to have a question on international corruption. They figured the American public didn't need to know. So if the, if the public doesn't know what's really going on, then you don't have you don't have a democracy, and that's what we're talking. Oh, we and that's and that's what and we try to tell these people this all the time. You know, there was a president. I think it was one of the Bushes that said, "If uh, Daddy Bush, that if the people knew what they were doing, that they would be lynching politicians in the street." And it's true. But then Americans are so brainwashed and cowardly now. This isn't the home of the brave. This is a home of the bend over and take it, man. All right. Because other people in other countries, 
they 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 attack and go to war with their government when they're mistreated, when they find out wrongdoing. But Americans, they don't do that. They listen to every, no matter how bad they're mistreated or, you know, how, how outwardly disrespectful the, uh, the people in office can be to the laws of the land, disregard the laws of the land and just pass bills and amendments and, 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 uh, change statutes and, and, and what do you call it? Uh, uh, executive orders over things that are never supposed to be able to be ruled over or changed. Well, Americans allow it all the time. Okay. So, but one of these days they're going to figure out how badly they're being screwed and, um, it's not going to end well. Okay. As a matter of fact, um, they use their power to do this. I got a couple scriptures in mind, a couple more. Um, I guess that, that's Micah. Uh, it's Micah 2, 1 and 2. Yep, and it says, Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. And they covet fields and take them by violence. And houses and take them away. So they oppress a man in his house, even a man in his heritage. And this is what they do. These world banks are behind these governments with these large militaries, which will go in and take your resources from you. Take, you know, oppress your heritage or control your resources. Give you a little bit. I'll, well, you know what? I'm allow you to live and allow you to have a title and, 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 and sit at the, you know, and, and, and look as if you're in power, but I'm really in power. But you're going to sit there and, 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 and be a prime minister or president for me because this is what's going to go down. And that is how things work. Like it or not, believe it or not, that's the way of the world, the true way of the world. All right. And, and it's failing, which is why this third world's war is, has begun and it's going to go full blown sooner than you think. But it's not going to go full, full blown until the sea hip is initiated. All right. And that time is close. So it's, it's not a whole lot of time. This is our wisdom of Solomon 2, and uh, I'm going to read verses 10 and 11, and it reads, Let us oppress the poor righteous man. Let us not spare the widow, nor reverence the ancient gray hairs of the age. Let our strength be the law of justice. So basically, fuck your constitution, fuck your, your, your laws, fuck your, you know, your, your, your documents that, you know, that give you your rights and your freedoms. And your, they, they like, fuck all that, because that's what they, they like I said, they, 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 they create scenarios falsely, uh, scam the people, scare the people, and then people just bend over and let them, you know, have their way with them as they change their way of life. And the people always end up losing in the end. All right. And quite frankly, there's some people in the world that is quite sick of it. All right. And, 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 and more importantly, the, the, you know, the most high God you're saying has, has reached into the heavens, man. Yeah, how was going to bring it a swift end to this to this madness that you got going on? But it says once again, let our strength be the law of justice for that which is feeble is found to be nothing worth. All right. So my army and my tanks and my jets and my and my my, my uh, surveillance uh, 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 system and my digital currency surveillance system and my, you know, and, 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 and my uh, 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 drones. I can do whatever, whatever the hell it is that I want. You can do nothing. Therefore, you are feeble and worthless. All right? You're just a worthless eater. As a matter of fact, I'm going to feed you bugs. You're going to have nothing, and you're going to be happy. <laughs> that's what... All right? Let me get one last scripture, man, because that's what they think. All right? The Lord is about to shake some things up, man. You seen all these chariots show up? Literally in clouds? I saw... I saw uh, three chariots sitting right in the middle of all them nasty ass, disgusting chemtrails and made circles in the middle of the chemtrails. Let Nissan know, man, that time is the, hey, these so-called UAPs and UFOs are making themselves visible to the whole world, man. Every day, somebody's videotaping, uh, to getting them on their cell phone, on their iPhone or their Android and uploading it to the internet for the whole world to see. All right. But this is, uh, Isaiah. 29, and they're not aliens. We know what they are. Those are the chariots of Israel. That's the Lord's Air Force. And there's nothing here on earth that, 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 that's here on the planet that can stop them or do anything against them. All right. This is Isaiah 19, I mean, 29, uh, 
and I'm going to start at verse, I'm going to read 19 and 20, and it reads, The meek also shall increase their joy in Yahweh, and the poor men among and the poor and the poor among the men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. All right. For the terrible one is brought to naught, and the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are cut off. So your time is up, uh, Esau Edom, you know, uh, uh, WEF overlords. So with that, I'm going to give all praises going honor unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rekah HaKwadash, Wa'ababababal, Kwam Yashirala, Shalom.